Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Before we get to the report, if you like our style of video and analysis, feel free to show support for Football Game Plan by dropping by our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan and leaving a little something in the tip jar. Every little bit helps us as we continue to improve the quality of our videos and the coverage we enjoy bringing you guys each and every time we put out a project. Thank you again for your support. Off our slot receiver rankings at number one is Braxton Miller out of Ohio State at 6'2", 215. Miller has that versatility. I believe he can play all three wide receiver spots, but he's ideally suited to play inside initially. He's dangerous with the ball in his hands. He's also not afraid to lay out for passes, and he has above average quickness. Now, he's inexperienced. That is a given. The position nuance, he doesn't have those little nuances that you want to see from a receiver, but again, he's just making a switch here, and at 6'2", 215, he plays like he's about 5'10", 185, so you want him to start to play up to his size and height, but he does have that upside. He has good hands, and he has the right attitude to get the job done. Sterling Shepard out of Oklahoma reminds me a lot of Eddie Royal of the Chicago Bears. He has elite level quickness and shiftiness, good awareness and zone coverage. He's great off the line of scrimmage with above average acceleration into his routes, and he also has very good hands. Now, he doesn't have the explosiveness to snap off routes on those outbreaking routes like your comebacks, your curls, your hitches. I think he tends to round those off, and catching through contact is also iffy at best. And he also can be rerouted, so he has to get a little bit stronger within the route. But he's elusive with the ball in his hands, and is definitely going to be a very good pro as he moves forward. There is a lot to like about Corey Coleman out of Baylor, who reminds me a lot of Steve Smith that played with the New York Giants, came out of USC. He can work in the slot or outside. I think he has underrated strength. He has great burst and suddenness, also above average hands. Now, I do believe his routes need a little bit polish. He doesn't consistently explode out of his breaks, and he can get big boy within his routes, so he has to get a little bit stronger in that capacity, but he can eat up cushion. He's a deep threat. He's a gamer. I think he's going to do an outstanding job as a pro. Pharaoh Cooper out of South Carolina at 5'11", 208 pounds, has really good versatility. I also like the fact that he's very good after the catch. He's a physical player with dependable hands and a knack for the big play. He also has very good suddenness. Now, I think he's a little stiff athletically, a little tight hip, marginal change of direction skills, and also is a limited route runner because of the stiffness. So he really has to gear down to make a cut, which is why I graded him out as a third-round prospect. I still couldn't ignore the fact that he does make plays once he get the foot once he gets the football in his hands, and which is why I compared his game to Golden Tate. Jakeem Grant out of Texas Tech may be your quintessential slot receiver that plays a lot like Tavon Austin of the Los Angeles Rams. He has explosiveness. He's a threat to score from anywhere on the field. He also has elite level agility and suddenness. You can ask LSU in the Texas Bowl about that. I think he's also a solid route runner in the short to intermediate area, and he also has tremendous field awareness. But I do believe he's limited to the slot because he can be rerouted with press. I don't think he's strong enough on the outside, and he's not the cleanest of catchers. He may double catch a couple of passes may catch the back to the middle part of the football i think he has to improve in that area but you can't question the fact that he's a legit game breaker Chris Moore out of Cincinnati had an outstanding week of practice at the Senior Bowl. He has great hands. He's not afraid of contact. And he's able to play above the rim, and he's also an above-average route runner. Now, he lacks explosiveness. He's not overly sudden. I also believe he'll struggle to separate, which is why I think he's better suited on the inside, and he must get better versus the press. But, uh, again, here's a guy at 6'1", 190 that can play the big game while also being savvy enough to play the small game in the short to intermediate area. Jaden Mickens out of Washington has a lot of Andrew Hawkins to his game. I think he has elite level ankle flexion with that stop and start ability. His lateral agility is excellent, and his return skills and good hands make him an ideal target to be on the inside and also as a punt returner. Now, I do believe he tends to round off his deeper routes 
like your posts, your corners, your deep outs. He also leaves his feet unnecessarily and can be quick with his decision versus zone coverage instead of seeing the field. But I do think he has a ton of value because of his ability with the ball in his hands and how he can make one miss. Willie Quinn is one of my favorite players in college football, plays a lot like Michael Lewis, AKA the beer man who played for the New Orleans Saints. He's explosive, he's a legit game breaker. He's a return specialist and also very fearless going across the middle of the field. Now he's limited on the outside versus press. His routes do need polish. He has to be kept clean in the passing game. You have to create those opportunities for him that look like a punt return, but he does have good enough hands. I think he's very underrated in that area and he's actually able to eat up cushion, which means he's able to get past that safety and deeper down the field. And I think this is a guy that definitely has a bright future in the NFL. Jared Dangerfield out of Western Kentucky at 6'2", 210 is coming off an excellent week down at St. Petersburg for the East-West Shrine game. He has very good hands. He can play both the big and small game. He's also excellent over the middle of the field. And like I said before, he can play all three spots outside X, Z, or even in the slot. But I like him as a bigger inside slot receiver. Now, he's not overly explosive and his releases, I think, tend to get sloppy. So as far as route running is concerned, if your release isn't clean, you can have some issues. So he has to become a little bit more consistent in that area. And he's not as sudden as you would like. And I think he will struggle to separate as a pro. But as an inside slot receiver with his ability over the middle of the field, he's definitely ha he definitely has a place in the NFL. Demarcus Ayers out of Houston at 5'10", 180, rounds out my top 10 slot receivers in this year's draft class. The one thing I like about his game, his footwork, and the fact that he can compete very well. I like the fact that he also is a very good punt returner, and he does a great job over the middle of the field, and you can situationally put him outside on the flanks, but I do think he's ideally suited to play the slot. I don't think his routes are clean enough, and despite being able to return punts and being known for being a dynamic player, I don't think he plays fast enough on a consistent basis. I think he's just an okay receiver in that aspect, So, but overall, I do think he has that special team's value and will find his way on a football team and make a contribution as a rookie. Daniel Braverman out of Western Michigan is an early entry in this year's draft class. I think he could have used another year, but what he put together on film, I thought he got better from 2014 to 2015. I love what he can do underneath, which is why I think he's an ideal slot receiver. Reminds me a lot of Michael Campanero of the Baltimore Ravens. And what I like about his game is the fact that he does a great job underneath. He has tremendous field vision. They move him around the formation at Western Michigan, but I think he's ideally suited inside. Now, he's not as explosive as you would like to see. Some of these slot receivers but he does a very good job in finding open spots and when he gets the football in his hands he can make one miss but i do think he has to become a little bit stronger and add much more polish to his route running Marquise Kushan out of Pittsburgh State, an outstanding Division II program, the Gorillas. I think this is an upside type player, a guy that's still learning the little nuances of playing the position. But so far, he has great route running ability. He can catch the football. He's dynamic. He can help out as a kickoff and punt returner. You see right here, you can move him in the backfield and he's still explosive and is able to make plays. I say he still has that upside because he was a two-time track and field All-American, played defensive back his first season at Pittsburgh State before moving to wide receiver. So you still see the little rawness in this game from a route running perspective and also from a polished catching the football and understanding zone concepts. So in that sense, he still has room to grow, but there's no doubting that he's a tremendous talent worth taking a chance on. I was able to check out Khalif Raymond out of Holy Cross live this year versus Albany, and I love his punt return skills. He actually had a punt return for a touchdown, but I was impressed at how often they moved him around the formation. You saw him at Z, you saw him as an X, you saw him in the backfield, but I think he's ideally suited as a slot. He has very good hands, and he runs solid routes, but he just doesn't have that explosiveness, that next gear to where, to where he can really threaten you deep down the field. I do think his home in the NFL will be inside and doing a lot of damage in the short to intermediate area. And rounding out our list for top slot receivers in this year's NFL draft class, Justin Cornwall of Moorhead State had a fabulous season for the Eagles over 950 yards receiving. I think he does a solid job with his route running and also catching the football in traffic and also making the contested catch. The issue is that I don't think he has enough explosiveness to where he can be a threat deep down the middle of the field or on the outside. So I think separation will be an issue, but in the short to intermediate area, I believe this is where he'll excel the most as a pro.